All right, everybody. I was on Twitter recently, and I looked at the Kobiesi letter. This is kind of an interesting statistics-based uh, Twitter account. They tend to be, again, more bearish than bullish, but still they have interesting statistics from time to time. And this particular one crossed my desk, and I found it very interesting. And so it lists out the population growth slash decline per year by state in the United States. So it says the top gainers are Florida, South Carolina, Idaho, Montana, and Texas, and the top losers were New York, Illinois, Louisiana, California, and New Jersey. And it says by city, San Francisco, New York, Chicago saw some of the largest population declines, but on the other hand, Miami has seen the largest inbound gains with inbound moves increasing since 60% since 2019. And they come here with the conclusion that affordability in the job market has redefined desirable places to live. I think for a lot of people, this is no surprise. I do find it interesting now that it's in 2022, so many people are interested in the idea of migration, relocation, stuff like that. So for example, I decided probably in 2015, 2016, I wanted to move out of the United States and I didn't act on that. I wasn't able to actually execute on that plan until 2018 and I actually moved outside of the United States. So I had a similar thing going on as these people, but they're actually deciding just to move within the United States rather than leaving, which is interesting because I look at a place like Texas and I think it can't be that dramatically different than California. A lot of people fall for uh, Texas thinking it's a greener grass, it's a better place to live. So for example, a lot of people brag that tax rates in Texas are low, which is true. But the problem is, while the income tax rate for the state is very low, how they make up for it is the property taxes. So I've seen comments here across on YouTube saying they moved to Texas thinking it'd be a great place to relocate, and they ended up paying more in property taxes. This is also not commenting generally about how people just don't prefer to be in cities. You see more and more people fleeing to suburbs, and you see the people who were in the suburbs fleeing into the rural areas. There's definitely a great migration and movement going on in the United States, a kind that we haven't seen since the 1950s. But I'm going to break it down for you further. So here's an entire map, population changes. This is now two years old information, but it's still interesting. I think even during this time, even though Corona was still in full swing, there were people moving around. People like to really rag on New York and California, but you actually will be surprised by a few of these. Louisiana and Hawaii have lost dramatic amounts of people, and so has Illinois and West Virginia, and even Oregon is a pretty strong contender. You can see that more people have moved out of Oregon than California, though with the biggest gainers, Idaho, that's not so big surprising, Montana, South Dakota, Texas, Florida, and South Carolina were all gainers, which was very interesting. It's interesting that, like, per capita, it seems that the Northeast and the West Coast have the most overall losses, whereas the Midwest is slightly clearing out, but it's undeniable that the most preferred states for people to go to are these ones up here, specifically Idaho, Texas, Florida. Now, these are only on a state basis, so I'm actually going to break this up by county, and we're going to see some really interesting stuff inside of this information. Now, this map tells a whole different story. Now, blue means it's the biggest gainer, and red means it's the biggest loser. And you see there are actually only certain parts of certain states that have been dramatically losing people. You can see overall in every single county in Idaho and Nevada, there are gainers. But in California, actually, there are counties more to the east that have been gaining popularity, such as, let's see here, Lassen County, Nevada County, Placer County, El Dorado County, Madera County, I've never been to these places, Merce County, and San Joaquin County. Whereas the biggest losers are Los Angeles County, Let's see right here, Orange County, Santa Clara County, Al Alameda County, and San Mateo County, and then finally Butte County. Those are all bigger losers. So a lot of people like to rag on California, but you can see that actually there are some parts of California that have gained more in population than the ones that have lost. So for example, there are counties in California that have gained just as much as any county in Nevada or in Florida. You see here, let's go here to Lawson County. That's a 1.3% gain. Let's go here to White Pine, Nevada. That's 1.1%. Let's go to Texas. Brazoria County gained 1.7%. And let's see, Brevard County here gained 1.4%. So there are places even inside of these supposedly get out quick, escape while you can states that people actually do want to go to and they are moving to. But it's interesting too, as you see half of Texas is depopulating and the other half is repopulating. And so this is a very similar situation to California. Florida is almost universally blue, except for one county down here in Miami-Dade. And one thing I think people shouldn't sleep on is... If you zoom in, you notice actually, people don't talk about this, but Tennessee, if I can just get this map to disappear, Tennessee is almost entirely blue. And this isn't mentioned as one of those relocation destination states, which so it's very interesting to say. Now, you can draw conclusions with this information for how property values are going to change, but it is interesting to see all the internal migration. Now, people have these narratives about, for example, the cities being intolerable, people moving out. Yet, I see, for example, let's scroll in. Almost all of West Virginia is losing population. And you notice here as well, there is a massive population move away from the 
rust belt you see up here by Michigan. And also the Midwest has this gigantic corridor stemming from all the way at the bottom of Texas all the way to the top of North Dakota. This entire corridor linking through Illinois has been losing people, whereas, for example, the far west out here by Idaho and Nevada is gaining a lot of people. And there are certain pockets in the south which also been gaining a lot of people. And also, too, if you look up here, don't sleep on the northeast. Nearly every some county in Vermont is gaining population. New Hampshire is exploding in population, 2.6. And there are even counties in Maine, which is pretty difficult to live into, growing 2.4%. So it is interesting to see that now after all these years, people are interested in moving and escaping where they live and relocating. A lot of this is due to the fact that you can work remotely, but also I do think two people are looking to safeguard their future, make sure they have a nice homestead to be on, they don't have to worry about other people. And it is interesting to see because when I decided to move now away from the United States eight years ago before finally pulling and making the decision five years ago, people looked at me like I was crazy. Like, what, what, what do you mean leave the United States? People are trying to get in there. I want to be, I want to live in the United States. It's great. But it's interesting to see how much perception is caught up with that. And I think it's important to drill down as much as possible not just look at the states because there are certain parts in states that people view as undesirable that plenty of people are flocking to because everybody says get out of california get out of california yeah i see a lot of places people do clearly want to move to anyway that's all for this video let me know what you think about relocating and possibly leaving the united states